Mesa, Arizona has reached an $8 million settlement last week with the widow of Daniel Shaver, an unarmed man who was fatally shot by police officers. That's according to the Arizona Republic. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the story, here's a quick recap. It's one of the worst police misconduct stories I've ever seen. In January 2016, Mesa police responded to a report of a man pointing a rifle out of a hotel window. Turned out to be him showing his pellet gun that he used at his job as an exterminator, and he was showing it to a couple other hotel guests in his room. So police then showed up. They ordered him out of the hotel room and onto the, the ground, onto the in the hallway in the hotel with his hands behind his head. But then instead of handcuffing him, even though they absolutely had him under control, the officers ordered him to crawl toward them without using his hands. And as, as Shaver tried to crawl toward police, he his pants fell down. He tried to pull them back up, which led the Mesa officer, Philip Mitchell Brailsford, to fire an AR-15 at him five times, killing him instantly. Uh, we do have the body cam footage of this instance. Please be warned, this is extremely disturbing. Don't watch it if this is something that is going to cause you any trauma. Here it is. Uh, National, former National Review writer David French now at the Dispatch said at the time, he's a conservative, supporter of Second Amendment rights, uh, and he served in Iraq, and he said, uh, our U.S. American soldiers in Iraq would not have treated uh, actual al-Qaeda terrorists like this. Um, this is a level of just police misconduct. Uh, so this person was dead. He had no opportunity. He was being asked to move in a way that, you, that it's not possible to move that way. There was no reason for it whatsoever, even if you accept the legitimacy of this encounter to begin with. They had him on the ground, his hands up. There were two police officers. So at that point, it would have been appropriate to handcuff him. There was, there was no desire. There was no need to go to any of this. That cop, just insane anger, barking, confusing orders at him, back and forth. It's, it's just so horrible. And then it gets even more horrible because he was acquitted. He was charged and acquitted. Jury acquitted him, the cop. And uh, then, um, and then, <laughs> so he was fired. But of course, he's able to get his job back. Uh, they, so this is from my colleague at Reason, C.J. Ciramella Brailsford, uh, challenged his termination, and in response, the city cut a special deal that allowed him to be temporarily rehired so he could retire with medical benefits and a disability pension. Disability pension, because he claimed that killing Shaver and his subsequent prosecution gave him post-traumatic stress disorder. He will receive a monthly pension, uh, $2,500 for the rest of his life. Thank you, Mesa taxpayers. I, I remember that video um, when it first came out, and it hasn't gotten any less horrific in the intervening years, no matter how many times I've seen it. It's, a, it's an extermination in cold blood, and the indifference to the man's life shown before he was shot, where the cop is saying, if you fall, you better fall on your face. I mean, that's a kind of an acknowledgement that he's in a tough situation in terms of following orders and moving in the way that he's being asked to move. The officer acknowledges that following orders might cause him to, to fall over and not be able to comply. And he is angry about that, viscerally so. Uh, to shoot someone with such a powerful weapon in such close quarters, and again, uh, the underlying reason that they're there is that he he uh, he owns a gun that he use a, a pellet gun that he uses in the course of his employment perfectly legally and justifiably. I mean, in so many of these cases, they are defended by people who say that they care about Second Amendment rights, but the victims in a lot of these cases that do have guns also have those same Second Amendment Absolutely. rights. And it is unfortunate that other factors. Sometimes politics, sometimes race prevents people from seeing that reality. And I'm very, I'm not obviously glad that this case happened, but I am glad that it's getting attention because these are issues that largely, they, they are often racially implicated, but they're, they're not race issues. Police violence is not some exclusively black or brown issue. White people are, just, are, are also killed at huge numbers. I think, 
an absolute numbers more by police violence. They are violence in absolute numbers. Than, yeah, they're more of the population, so the percentages are not right. But in absolute numbers, they are killed. Right, yeah. and I think so many people have been whipped up into political frenzies to basically defend that practice um, and defend the extent to which so many Americans across the spectrum are terrorized by police in exactly this way. So um, I'm glad to see this getting a attention again, and hopefully there will be some actual uh, consequences meted out for not just this person, but for all of the instances of police misconduct and ineptitude that we've been mm -hmm. um, reporting on over the course of this year. And if you if you were just a citizen, you had an AR-15, and you killed someone in a hallway, and you said, well, I was afraid for my life while I was barking orders at this terrified, petrified, clearly unarmed. You heard in his well, voice. It's horrible uh, to listen to. If you, said, if you tried to argue that, you would go to, no one, a jury would not believe that, you would go to prison. So why is it that police officers who have training in order to be able to respond in these, who were trusting with power and were, and they should be able to handle these situations actually better than just your average citizen. So, they, but it, it's the opposite. They get more leeway. They, even though they should know how to, they have been trained to and they are paid to, it's their job to correctly diffuse these situations, of which it would, this situation would have been trivially easily, easy to diffuse. Uh, they, it's the opposite. They are not held accountable for doing things that would get anyone else um, uh, I mean, arrested for murder. Yeah, we, we, were, we were talking about this, I think, uh, just a little bit last week, that the, the narrative around cops is weirdly that they should never have a scratch. Yeah. It's not, it's a dangerous job, and occasionally, tragically, there are going to be bad outcomes, but this is the job that you sign up for. You are supposed to be willing on some level to put the public before yourself and put yourself in harm's way for the public good. No, it's we're going to armor these people up. We're going to basically make the standard that nothing should ever happen to them. And at that point, they become dangerous. Because if, if they are an armed quantity that's in a dangerous situation and the standard is that they should be protected first, what that means is that they become the agent of chaos. They're the ones that are causing harm. And their subjective belief that they are in harm's way becomes a justification for them to do absolutely anything. And given that they have so many many arms at their disposal, that means that they can cause an infinite amount of disaster. And that's what we're seeing in situations like this. I mean, I've blanked in like routine traffic stops. When they say, you hand over your papers, you hand them the wrong paper, because it's, it's a, you're flustered. You're nervous, it's a yeah. frustrating, you're nervous thing. So e even, in, even when they're being perfectly friendly, it can be an intimidating experience. <laughs> So this experience in which this person is being like told he's about to die and then and then is killed. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's just truly horrible. And yeah. uh, and not only did he not go to jail, he's going to get paid for by the taxpayers forever. Yeah. yeah. Well, look, I, I did see a lot of conservative interest in this story and it was mm -hmm. very nice to see. Mm -hmm. And I hope that trend continues. We'll continue to cover it, obviously, and we'll have more rising for you after this.